resort. Here you got to use three fingers and you got to keep doing it until they finally come up. Hey, just just a quick note. I'm opening us up on, on the feed, so this will be a live feed. I know uh, my folks aren't joining us today. I'm not sure how many other people are going to join us. We, we are getting started. Okay. It opened without me putting the code Putting in. the code in. It, remind, it remembered it. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm on the, I'm on the tablet now. Hey, Fred, we're already live on air just to let you know. We aren't officially starting for another five minutes, but I just went ahead and opened up the feed. All right. Can you get the cameras close to the same place? However you had it before was awesome because we were able to look at both. We were looking almost directly at both your image from the same angle. All right, I turned the sound down on the tablet so I don't get the feedback. Perfect. Okay. So. See, I was going to do the same thing one time, but my um, my iPad, it uh -huh. will not, um, it, I can't download Google Meet on it, the app, and it won't let me go in on my browser. And it's to do with the age of it. But I have joined on my phone before at the same time. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, so, I'm, so on the, I'm on the Apple tablet and on my... Uh, yeah, you know, because of the angle you've got the tablet at, it's getting to catch some more light. Well, I don't know where to put it. <laughs> Somehow you had it before directly, right beside the other camera. I don't know how you had it, but we were able to just... Yeah, that's very close to what we were looking at before. You definitely have a wider field of view with the with the i iPad. You can see it on you. Oh, actually, you can see it on your other equipment. Your other equipment is the, is a Windows Ten laptop, right? Correct. I think I think your hair looks sharper in the iPad as well. I think and it looks fuzzy and. Oh, go ahead, Cheryl. On the laptop, if you go to the top right hand corner where your tiny picture is and set it so that you see there you'll be able to see yourself in in two screens I can I, see in two screens there you go I, I can do one better than that i can i can pin you to my screen <laughs> and now you should have four of you three. <laughs> or three of you <laughs> She's she's in the middle on the top and then the bottom on two corners like it, it's like we're three here and Linda's, you know? it's it's a Linda takeover. Hey. <laughs> I'm coming to San Carlos next week. Oh, excellent! I wish I was there today to see the big sailing ship. And is that where all of our um, our that... San Carlos people will be? Judy and and Paul. I think Judy's left. Oh, is Judy not in San Carlos? I think she went to Colorado. I haven't seen her at all. Oh wow! And I have. I know that's. I I know the boat. Going back to the boat, that's where my family is going to be this morning. Yuya is taking the kids. They're both Emily's on summer vacation, and Bibi's got a day off from school today. So the three of them are going to go check it out. It's, it's always like eight o'clock this morning. They were posting pictures from the marina. Are they? Like yeah, I think on the boat. I think they're going out to the boat when it's in the water. They're going to watch the boat do activities from oh. another boat. Okay. Oh, are they? Oh, so they must be yeah. down there already. Yeah. Well, oh. they're on their way right now. If they're not walking out the door, they're doing it right this moment. If they haven't already walked out the door, they're doing it right this moment. Okay. okay cool. <laughs> It would be fun if they joined us from the meeting on the boat. <laughs> well, what's what do you try it out of the tablet? Oh, okay. So, what was our well, well here? Let's so it's hitting 10 o'clock, so let's be uh, formalized a little bit. I see uh, another friend has joined the meeting. Hi, Lynn, it's nice to have you with us. This is the San Carlos Computer Club. 
We meet every Tuesday about 10 o'clock, and anyone is welcome to join us. Some of us jump on this a little early to help me test volumes and, and, and streams to make sure everything's working. And I've already turned on the YouTube stream, so keep in mind, all this is on public record. <laughs> so behave yourself. I don't know why we got an R rating that last time. I think somebody took their pants off when, when I wasn't looking. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great to have you guys here. Like I said, I'm Scott from International Computer Solutions. If you got a problem out there on the internet, I can probably reach out remotely and help you with it. Just get a hold of me, remote at internationalcs.net. I'll plug anything. If you guys got anything you think we need to know about, please let us know. We do recommendations during our meeting. And so if you got a website, a book, uh, a... Um, a podcast, movie, or TV show that you guys think other people would enjoy, please share it with us when we're doing recommendations. And I want to just quickly say that I've made an, a, an account with track.tv for the San Carlos Computer Club, and there is recommendations list change. And I have that link to share with you guys today. Last week, I had put uh, a list on my own personal account and immediately found that too limiting. And so I created an account specifically for the San Carlos Computer Club. And I will stick it in our chat meeting. I also posted it on the website too and on Facebook's Facebook page. So if you're looking for that, you don't need a track account. You can go to it anonymously and just look at a list of all the recommendations we've made in this club over the last, well, geez, the, during the COVID holiday period. <laughs> For some so, reason, so I'm at... I went and looked at it. Yeah. So you're right. I can see it and I and everything, but I was thinking of commenting or, or doing something, and I have to have some sort of an account to that... follow or... Do that you definitely with. need. You, you need an account. A track account? What is it? Mm -hmm. They're free. You can sign up for them. Uh, we've talked about them quite a bit in the past because what they allow you to do, the, the real power of the track account is being able to integrate it into a player that you're using, like Kodi or Streamio or one of these things that would allow you. It's called scru um, scrubbing or scr scrubbing. I can't even say now. Um, uh, scrobbling. I think that's right. Scrobbling. Now I'm going to have to Wikipedia that word. But uh, what it does is it just keeps track of what you're watching. So it's not an app. It is an actual uh, website? It's, track is a website and an app. And it'll okay, so, what okay, you're if, so if I create so in if I uh, an account, you think it's going to track what I'm watching, but doesn't it have to be created on a certain device? Well, what you would do is similar to your email, you would have an account with the website, and then you would sign into that account using an application. Okay. So so you would have something like you would be using Streamio and you would attach that to your track account. Or you would use Kodi and you would attach one of the plugins to your or all your plugins to your track account. And so and so that's example, the real Go ahead. So I I've, I've got my Fire Stick TV, a Fire Stick on the TV. I'm, that's I'm right. Watched... I watch Streamio on it. I watch Disney Plus on it. Mm -hmm. And so that's the device. Right. The Streamio I... program, which, or in fact, the, the Android program, we would have to double check. I don't think, at least the version of Streamio I'm using on my Android device does not allow me to connect to track without having a Streamio account. So if you have a Streamio account, I believe that you can connect it to track. 
the Windows 10 version of Streamio, you can uh, uh, connect to track just by authorizing it on track. To give, it, to give you an idea, and I think we covered some of it on the Kodi, is that what it would do is it would give you an activation code for right. track. And then you'd go to the track website, it would be track TV slash activate, and you'd put in that code and it would attach your media program or media device to your track account. But but really, I mean, we're a little little off topic because I really what all I was mentioning is that if you're looking for all the recommendations, and I finally found the link you're seeing on the on, on the screen there. And I'm going to paste it into the chat room now. And it's also on the website. You can go, and this is a list of all the TV and shows that we've been talking about in club. I am still always looking for the ideal solution. This is not the ideal solution. But at the very least, if you're wondering what I should watch next and you're thinking about something we might have talked about, you can come to this page. It's up to date as of the last club meeting. I'm, I'm motioning like this is still on the page. So you'll, you'll see a bunch of titles here that are all related. And I'll continue to list them in the blog posts that get up on sccclub.org. But uh, I'll put them in this list here so that you guys can find them very quickly and easily. One of the neat things about track as well is you can click into one of these items and it will tell you where you can find it as far as a streaming service. It's got this watch now under, underneath, and it shows you all the services where you can find that movie. In this case, it's only listing Netflix. This particular okay, so movie, I think, was made specifically for Netflix. Okay, so look up Nomadland and see if you can find it. Well, I actually put Nomadland in the list, so it should be here. Okay. And this is all an impromptu topic because I did not mean for it to turn into a thing. Come on. Load up this list again. Page unresponsive. Excellent. Oh. There I am saying, get out of it. Right when it's saying it's working now. Everyone's still there, right? I just noticed that I'm having uh, bandwidth problems. All of a sudden. Nomad land. Are you looking for a place to watch it? Is that why you ask? Yes. It says zero services. Yeah. You have to pay. Why why is that? Where is it? You have to buy it from it. Amazon Prime? Is that where you watch it? I watched it. it. That's where you have to buy it from. Yeah. I think Amazon Prime. I think it's five dollars. Where, where did you, we've already watched it. I'm sure I didn't buy it. I'm sure I used something like Streamio. I, I use Streamio because I, I watched it and I know I didn't pay anything for it. I should qualify that. I know I fell asleep in it. My <laughs> wife watched it. She said it was an awesome movie. It was. I believe her. Was, She's got good it taste. Was, it was very slow and it was very interesting. And um, I can see why it, won an oscar but um it yeah it is very very slow and it, it's not an action movie at all <laughs> it's it's real life and it's um and it's depressing real life it's not motivational or inspirational or any of those categories it's basically i i called it reality tv but that has a whole different connotation uh this was actually her life and living in a desert and living in a little Trailer. Yeah, I I heard all that. Fabulous and... performance. Well, have you guys? Hey, Jim, welcome. Western Arizona. Yeah. You know, 
It, it was really interesting, Linda, because it was places that we've driven through, like Quartzsite and yeah. um, the the Great Basin Highway in north in Nevada. Uh, so the the scenery and and the the people that were living in the this community and their approach to strangers and everything it was it was a very 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 interesting. Huh. Well, you know, Fargo was a, was kind of like that too. Which? Yeah, can, yeah, a bit. I mean, Fargo that's kind of. That, that's the Cohen brothers. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, they, they really pushed it. <laughs> they, 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 extreme, extreme, um, what is it I'm thinking of? Extreme normality. Like, like a normality, but 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 to to the very extreme, dealing with extreme situations with just normal people in a normal place, having normal conversations. But there's a murder. <laughs> there's a wood chipper. <laughs> You're talking about Fargo. Yeah, I am. Whereas whereas this nomad's land was was not shocking any other than the actual reality of. Of this is this is, this is very true to form. This is the world we're living in now, or so I'm told, because I fell asleep in it. <laughs> I like my movies to be fantastic. That's the, there's a sleep indicator on how good they are. If I wake up on the couch by myself and I don't know the ending, I don't think it was a very good movie. <laughs> Well, we is everybody here? Is this thing on? I have to do this. We like um, thrillers, so you know some of these movies we don't like, and we don't like the stuff that's uh, out there, like science fiction. Oh, like science fiction. Some of sorry. us really like science fiction, Linda. Sorry, Linda. Some of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey. I hope you guys brought some topics. I've got a bunch of topics. We don't have to do any of them, but uh, I do have some follow-up stuff that I thought you guys would find interesting. I, I spent some some real time working with Amazon Photos Unlimited Storage, and uh, it's it's so far it's it's kind of cool. It, it's lacking an app. They have an app that you download, and the app. Even the app itself says it's Amazon Photos, but then it, it, it titles itself Amazon Backup. Oh, here comes Jim. But it wasn't that difficult to install the app and point it at my photos and start sending them up. What was interesting about it was that the... Um, it keeps, I'm trying to bring it up on the screen and now I'm realizing that I took a picture of it so I didn't have to wait for an application to start to do this. Let me bring up the picture. Hopefully this will. Chester's here too. Hey Chester, hey Jim. Glad you guys could join us. I was just Thank talking you. about last week we had um, talked about Amazon Photo Storage. They're offering unlimited, full-quality photo storage for Amazon Prime members. And they offer you five gigabytes of um, space for video. And I found it very easy to install and configure the app to point at my, my photos folder. Took a while to get them up there. I think it, it took between... It took almost 24 hours to, to get all the photos up there. Well, in my waiting for the picture, it looks like the app is starting up. Pardon me. Do they have well, an I... Amazon Prime? It's on Amazon Prime right now. B. And then if you want to store more than, oh my gosh, this is just taking forever to come down. 
And Scott, your your um, audio and is is very 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 um, blocky, chippy. Like, oh yeah, am I hard to hear? Yeah. Mm, what's going on? Turn that off. Yeah, it just feels like all of a sudden my computer's being really picky about what's going to work. Let me turn that off. I am going to disconnect for one moment. I'll be right back. I have no idea what's going on or why it's not working. But look at that. Look at that app just frozen there trying to do something. I'm still streaming. I hope I'm sounding okay on this stream. I guess I could find out. Gosh.
uh, at down here are are listed uh, in folders by date and, and a name, okay? And to get that into Google Photos is a, you know, you have to create a folder, and then you have to, once you've got it in there, it's just as frustrating. Like, uh, I don't know. I, it, I, I'll put them in there, but I doubt if I'll ever get them back out <laughs> in any form that I recognize. It's like, anytime you look at it, there's just a, a whole mess of pictures there that, that really doesn't have any organization to it. You can't sort them the way you want, other unless you want to sort them by a face. You want to do a, a facial recognition. Well, it's pretty well, good at that. It's, it's, it's really good it's at, really good at, 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 at a, a, a number of things, things like, that. like that. Like, say, for like, example, say for example, you take pictures of fish, you can you ask Google, Google for your fish pictures, pictures they'll and they'll all come. Or you're a bicyclist, or you're a bicyclist you, can you can ask for pictures on bikes. I want to look at the motorcycle picture that Cheryl and I took in uh, 2017 well, that I well, know exists. Have, have, you, have you tried motorcycles, tried motorcycles just, to begin, just to begin with? Oh, yeah, and then I get all the motorcycles. All right. All right, and then you start putting, start putting a date in, there, in, there, in there, there as well? Uh we're talking about we're your, talking about your yeah, we're talking about yeah, your, talking photo, your photo collection. You've got, right? lots, You've got motorcycles. lots of motorcycles, I guess. Uh, I got a lot of motorcycle pictures, yes. Yeah. yeah. But so like, motorcycle, so like motorcycle, 19. 19 oh, well, maybe, oh, well, it, was maybe it was a scanned image, image. So maybe it doesn't, so maybe have, it doesn't a have a date assigned to it. That's exactly right. Like we had, we took our photo albums, all our photos, and had them scanned in by a service. And you get the date they were scanned. That, that, well, you lose well, all your other information. Well, if you know, well, if you know it's in that pile, that pile that then date that date specifically helps, helps you. So you have motorcycle and the date, and the that, date it that it was scanned in. in. Well, I don't know. I've, I've scanned in or I've moved in to folders named after the folders that I have in the scanned uh, area on the computer. And then try to search for just that album is, is, is a, a nightmare. It just... It's just, just uh, let's just leave it at it. it is a very frustrating situation. It just does. I just don't really. I maybe I'm doing this wrong. Maybe well, I'm, I'm well they're, they're giving it. They're, 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 they're taking away your free, free space anyway. anyway. So maybe so since you're a prime, prime member, member, you should, you should take advantage, advantage of, of Amazon's thing. Because well, Am Amazon, Amazon isn't, 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 downgrading isn't downgrading the quality of your photos. photos. You're able to, you're do, able to do full photos, photos unlimited. unlimited. As long as you stay a Prime member, you're fine. I know. And I know. I and I ask myself that question. That question. It's, like, it's like, damn it. Am I going to stop, I gonna using, stop Prime? using Prime? Well, here's... here's <laughs> is, is, is that really going really to happen? <laughs> the problem being that I've known since, what, the beginning of the year or earlier that Google is going to cap uh, their limit. And I'm down to the last six days or five days right, to get it. Right, right. So, Amazon says, "Oh shit, you're okay. You can have all the time you want. I'll never do it." But they've, but they've, they've actually, they've actually had, unlimited had unlimited this whole time. This whole they've, time. Just they've just done a re, done a re PR, PR push, to, push remind to remind us all that, all that you could be, be moving over, over, to over to us. Now, here's here's the other question: If I have everything loaded into Google, can I move it over to Amazon reasonably easy, or do I have to push them all back into Amazon from some from my computer again? I think you. I think still you have, still I mean, have. Right I mean, now, right I now, I don't think there's any kind of tie-in between, between cloud services, services like which that. Which would be an interesting thing. thing. I wonder. I wonder if, if in, in in the in the interests of competition, competition, the United, the United States, States could get into, get into regulation, regulation like, like that. You know, we, you know, we, we have that, we with, have that the with the phone company where they have they have to pass your phone number around. If you don't like Sprint, you should your phone number is part of your identification. You you should be allowed to move it from one network to the other. And I think that's and I think that's pretty seamless these days. But in but in in the cloud space, I don't know of any. I mean, maybe there's, I mean, some, maybe there's third some third parties, parties out there making, making money, money charging you to take on take on that that burden, that burden of moving services, services moving data your data from one, from one service to another. The, 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 only, way the only way I know, I know is a surefire way is you download it to a, to a local, to a local computer, computer, 
and then and then you and then re upload it to the other service. Oh, I've, I've, I haven't seen I haven't anything, seen anything that's, tying that's tying these services, services together. I, I you know I, you know I, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting Google, Google search. search. We should we should, we should, find, we should out find out if anybody's doing, doing that, that and if it's required. I'll see. I'll take it as my homework assignment to see if I can look that up. Hey, that would be hey, awesome. That would be awesome because that. I mean, that, not, I mean only not only is that, that like a a, 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 a niche, niche uh, business, uh, business opportunity, opportunity, but it might but it might be a political, be a political thing, thing too. It might too. be, it might just, be like just like your phone, phone number. You should be able to move your data, data around the cloud as it, as, as, it, conveniently as conveniently as possible. As possible. And maybe maybe that's something that needs to be guaranteed through regulation. Well, I can just imagine what a scrambled mess it would be if they did even uh, allow you to do it. You know, it would be even more obscure. Well, it's well, it's we've got we've got technically we've, we've got to be very close, close to being, to being making making, making that, that sort of thing, thing easy. easy. And I think some I think of this some stuff, of this when, stuff when, it, when it's common when sense it's and it's and easy, it's easy uh, may uh, may, it may be ripe for that kind of regulation. Kind of the, the, you look at what had to happen, had to, happen to get everybody, everybody on page, on page with, the with the European Union and their and rules their of privacy. privacy. How you how you how they require, they require that a service, a service is, able is able to provide you with, you with the data, the data they've, they've collected on you at any given, at any given moment, moment and be able and be to able erase, to erase that, data that data upon your upon request. Your request. It, changed it changed the industry, the industry online. online. Every, every, everywhere, everywhere you go you now, you can you get a packet of all your data. You can see, see everything, everything that they, that have, they on have on you. you. And you can request to have it wiped out at any moment. So Scott, you I've, said that it took you about 24 hours to upload all your photos to Amazon Photo. Uh, if you could just explain that process a little bit to me. And then you also just said that it killed your cool computer system. So yeah, hmm, yeah. I, I, I'm a little I'm nervous, a little nervous to, crank to crank on the application. On the application. Right now, right now, because, because I don't know, I don't what, know was what was happening when I tried to turn it on, it would not come on. I, it may not, it may not be the app. app. I, I, feel I, like I feel like I just had, had a connection problem where my internet, where my internet just, just went down to nothing, down to nothing. And, I was and I was trying to pull a number of network resources all at the same time. So it was, it was like all of a sudden I was cut off, and my computer was asking for everything at the same time. And, uh, and uh, now, <laughs> yeah, every, yeah, every, everything's, everything's stabilized, stabilized now, now. But I will, I will play, play with it when, when, when we're not when having this meeting and see if, and it, see if continues it continues to be a problem. To be a problem. And I'll and get I'll back to you on some, some of the things that I was going to share next week. Next week. Uh, because I found, uh, because it, I found fascinating. it fascinating. I found one, I found one, one, of, the one of the questions online, online that, I that I had that I went out searching for an answer to was how, was to, how to only upload photos because Right out, the right bat. out the bat, I even think I, even I, think answered, I answered an interview, an interview that, had a that had a check mark that I removed from videos, from videos thinking, thinking I don't even, I don't even want to try and put videos up because I don't want to buy space. space. I want to use what's part of Prime. Part of Prime. And, and it's still, it's it, still uploaded it uploaded videos. videos. And I did and find, I did find I, I, Google, searches Google searches people, people all had the same, same question, question and, most and most had the same answer. Had the same answer. They, there's no, they, way, there's to no way to do that. You, 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 you just it needs, it needs to fail, and, and, and then you need to remove them, them. and you just you just it's, it's all, all or nothing. But that's not but that's true. Not I true. found with the app that you can tailor to photos only. And so I was going to share that with you. Let me let me get away from it now because I got a whole list of things that we can talk about. I'm sure you guys have topics, and I would and I would like to talk more about it but i don't feel confident with the i want to bring up the app without worrying about it falling apart okay so outside of that of that and we are and we are still just sort of sort of stumbling stumbling to a start from my start uh, I did want uh, to mention, we've got, mention some we've got some more people on today than we had, than we had uh, last, week. last week. And I'm and still, trying, I'm still to trying to get that pretty name, name from YouTube so I can so do youtube.com YouTube slash computer club or San Carlos Computer Club. And for me, and to, for get me that, to get that, I need to get more than 100 subscribers. And so if you're, I know you have, I know you have a, I know right now you have a Google account because you're talking to me in this meeting. And you could just go over to YouTube and find our channel and hit the subscribe button. It would be one one subscriber, more subscriber, and I'd be one, more, I'd be one closer more closer to getting a pretty, getting a pretty name, on, name our on our channel. So if you've so got if that, you've got I'd, that really I'd really appreciate it. it. Go, go over that again. Go to YouTube and what? Go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. In fact, I'll put in, I'll the, put chat, in the chat, but, but I, made I made a link specifically, specifically for, the for the computer club. club. It's called it's YouTube. YouTube.sccclub.org. Sccclub.org. 
Clubclub.org. Just, put, just it in. put it in. Oh. Oh. Damn you. Damn you. I will. Put I will it put it in. Hyperlink. YouTube.scclub.org. Dot dot we'll take you, we'll right, take to you right to the channel. It's in the, it's in the chat room, chat room now. now. And it should be popping up on my screen. I went to it last Tuesday during the meeting, and I then copied the um, request to subscribe and sent it to all my friends on Messenger, including James's wife, Carolyn, and Jim Cunningham, and, and I, I sent it to right. them on right. Messenger and asked them to please subscribe. So I don't know if they did. I was going to say, I was gonna this, say is this is turning into Cheryl's, into Cheryl's calling, calling, you, calling out you out segment. <laughs> But I really, but I really appreciate it. I just want to put a pretty name, name on the channel right now. Right the now, channel the channel name is something, is something ridiculous. That's the reason I made a, a, um, a, hyperlink, a hyperlink to it. To it. Yeah, in fact, yeah, in fact, I don't know if you can see the channel name is youtube.com slash channel slash UCSTD in capitals and then JMK in lowercase and then UD in uppercase and OV in lowercase. I'm not going to finish it. It's just not. This, this, that, that's, that, why that's why I made, why I made youtube.sccclub.org YouTube so that you can so find, you can find it easily enough. enough. But what I really, what want, I really want is I want to be able to say youtube.com slash San Carlos Computer Club. That is that out, is of, the out of the way. That's off my to-do to -do list, list for today's, for today's yeah. meeting. I've got the, the whole list of the computer club we could send in the, We could send out a thing to... to. That would be that awesome. would be awesome. Call from <laughs> oh, and, they're, and off they're offline. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got a quick comment, Scott. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Does uh, that picture that that Paul Gregory's got there? Well, we moved. Sit down, Paul. The the picture he's got there. Does that remind you of Johnny Depp as Tonto in the Lone Ranger? No. No. <laughs> It's Paul. It's Paul. Paul's reminded me of for a long time. I finally figured it out. Paul's headdress. Paul's headdress. Yeah. I don't want to go this way too much. I'll get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I hey, also I had also another follow-up follow follow from, from last week. You know, we, you know, were, we doing were doing some, some network, network diagnostics, diagnostics last, week. last week, and and I had. I had some weird, Some weird stuff, stuff go on when, on when I was using the NS, the NS lookup, lookup um, program. Uh, program. I don't know if you I don't remember, know if you but, remember it was, but it was. Let me. Let me. I have a picture here. The, I, the, it was bringing, I, it was up, bringing up the strange. strange I, I, would I, I would use NS lookup, NS lookup for for, for CNN.com. CNN and it would and bring, it would bring up, up this really like CNN dot um dot um. Press, 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 don't, press don't, uh, uh, there it is. There it is. Let me share. Let me show you. Desktaco.com. Was bringing up bringing up CNN Desktaco.com. This is a picture, a picture from from an app, an app that you use, that you use called, called IP config, config at the command, at the command prompt. prompt. Right here, right here I am just, I am at, just a at a C prompt. This is what, this I, was is what I was getting at the very at top. The very top. I, 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 I hope you guys can see that okay. Right here at, right the, top. Here at the top. When I would when use, I would NS use NS lookup, lookup for CNN.com, it would, it would change it to CNN.com dot desktaco.com, and it would look up an address that's incorrect. And it caught me, and it caught off, me guard. off guard. We were in the middle of this thing, and my computer was spitting me back. Rare information. Rare information. Uh, uh, literally, literally like through like DNS, DNS redirecting, redirecting me. And I was, and I was not, aware, not of aware of it. When we got done, when we got with, done with the meeting, the first, the first thing, I thing I did was start looking, was start for, looking a for a virus. If you, if you a diagnose, diagnose, diagnosing, diagnosing network problems, network problems and I, stumble I stumble across something that, something looks, really that looks really suspicious. suspicious. My first, my first thought, is, thought is I've got, I've a, got virus a virus in my computer, in my computer and, it's and it's redirecting me. And so, and I, so start I start checking my, checking virus, my virus logs, logs running, virus running virus scans, scans running, malware running malware bites. bites. I'm not finding, I'm not this. finding Everything this. Everything about my computer, about my computer is, looking is looking clean. clean. So, I start so I start trying to describe, to describe this problem, this problem on, on Google. Google. And I come across, and I come across an, issue an issue 
that I was able, I was to, able verify to verify by using, by using this IP, IP config command, command that you see on my screen here. At the, at the command, command prompt, prompt with the greater, with the than, greater than sign, sign it shows, it shows IP, IP config slash all, and it, and it, I, the, it, brought, it up brought up pages of information. But right at the but top, you'll see this DNS suffix, DNS on, my suffix on my screen. And you look over and you see this whole list of... of Domains. Domains. And there shouldn't, and there be, shouldn't anything be anything there. there. It should be empty. It should be empty. If I, uh, if I uh, bring up a bring command, up a command prompt, prompt right, right now, I'll show you what it's supposed, what it's to, look supposed like. to look like. IP. IP. Fix. All. All. See, it brings, see, up, it brings pages up pages of information. Of information. Um, but if we but go, if we up, go here, up here... Well, it's not even well, it's there. Not even it's, there. Not, it's just not. It's, it's not. Even it's not even there because, because it's supposed to be blank. Because, because, because there's not supposed to be anything in there. There isn't supposed to be by default a suffix to look up, like shows like in this, shows in this picture. picture. This uh, DNS, suffix DNS suffix search. This, should this exist. shouldn't exist. So through so some through more, some more searches, I discovered, I discovered that, that uh, this is uh, this setting. is a setting. And it's probably, and it's been, probably in been in my computer for a couple of years, of years now. now. I recognize, I recognize all, these all these domains as being as from being a Makila, from a Makila I, used I used to do work with. And I and suspect I, suspect I either loaded them, them at one time, or I ran, or I ran one of their one utilities, of their utilities that, loaded that loaded them at one time, time because I was because using my computer, my computer on their on network. Their network. And, and by having, by these, having suffixes these suffixes here, here this, is, this, is, this is where you, find, where you, you find, find them. You find them in your, your, internet, your internet settings, settings under, under your TCPI TCP settings, TCPIP TCP settings, settings, under the under DNS, DNS settings, append, append these, these DNS, DNS suffixes. suffixes. And this is and this totally, is totally what, a what a virus will do, or a malware, or a malware will do, will do is they will, it will run a script that will come in here and it will put this kind of activity in here. And what this and what means, this means is, that is that every time you go to look up an address, up an address it's, going, it's to going to add this suffix to it, to it first. first. So if I look so up, look up cnn.com, CNN. the first thing, the first thing it's going to do, it's going to, it's going to append, append CNN, uh, to cnn.com cnn. 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 Dover, Dover hyphen, hyphen global.net global. from, from, from this example. You that see that on my screen. It's just going to add it to the end of it. So no matter what my DNS is, it's going to look it up with this on the end of it. If this is on the end of it, the first thing your DNS does is it sends it over to that DNS. So if this, so is, if in this computer, is in your computer, if you've got if you've something, got something like, this, like this change, change you risk, you the, risk possibility the possibility of using an address, an address that another that another, that, that a malicious program, program out, out there is looking for, looking for. And, it and it redirects you over to their, to their DNS, DNS, so it can so grab, it can grab that cnn.com, CNN. and it can and point it, can to, point something it to something else. else. This, this I think was I think legitimate, was legitimate because, of because of work that I've done, done. But, but this same technique, same technique can be very, can be malicious. very malicious. And so, and where, so this where this is, by, is default, by default, this isn't this checked. Isn't it's, checked. Append it's a append primary, primary connection, connection specific, specific DNS, DNS suffixes. suffixes. So this, so this box, box or this, or this, this radio, button radio button above it above should, it be, what's should be what's checked by default. By default. There should be there nothing, should be nothing in, here. in here. But it's one, but of, the it's one of the ways that you can get compromised, and it's what and caught me off guard when I was when trying, I was trying to use and show, and show you the NS lookup, lookup command, command, which is available, which is available on Mac, Mac as well as PC, and it and should, it look, should like look like this when we do a when CNN, CNN lookup. Look that's that's we should get a we quick, should get a quick response. response. It should show, it should us, show all us all the addresses that are attached to that. To that, name. to that name, it shouldn't, it be, shouldn't looking be looking up any up other any addresses. addresses. So if I was so going to do, do an NS lookup, I could, I could use NS lookup, lookup to find out Telmex's information. 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 There's, its There's its main address, address there. there. You can do you some, can do some, some fairly, fairly sophisticated, sophisticated stuff in here, stuff in like, here you like you could... 
List the domain. List the domain. Oh, it won't let oh, me it do won't it let because, me do I, don't it because I don't have permission. Ah, I use too secure stuff. Anyway. Anyway. At this juncture, at this juncture the most important, the most important thing, thing to me is for you to, for you to um, be aware um, of that domain, that domain suffix, suffix addition, addition that can be added when you're, when you're, by, what, taking by taking it off. It off what I've done what is I've, done I've sped, sped up the, up the amount of time it takes to look up a name. name. Because it doesn't, because it get, doesn't transferred get transferred over to a different, to a different DNS. DNS. It's not it's failing on those DNS, on those DNS servers. servers. And so it's, and so it's, it's, it's sped, sped up how long it takes, it takes for, for a, reaction a reaction time, time when, I click, when I click on a link. But it had, but it to, had have to have been sitting in there for two years, two years because I haven't, because I haven't worked, worked for that organization in a long time. So that's just so that's follow, just up, follow up, up from last meeting, meeting in that respect. In that respect. It's another good example of why you ought to do a reset to your computer every year. It's uh, it's uh, not a not bad a suggestion. bad suggestion. And the way Windows, and the way Windows 10, 10 is built, is built it's, not it's not too hard to, to well, especially, well, especially with these cloud, with these cloud services, services now. Not it's too not too hard to have a backup, have a backup of your data, of your data and, and just refresh your, your computer. A, a, real a, a real trick with the Windows, with the Windows 10 is that if you, that if you actually, actually use only Windows 10, 10 store apps, then, then it will just, it will just it's, it's not, not a, a good with a good internet connection, connection it's not a big it's deal, not a big to, deal refresh to refresh your computer. You buy right, you buy right, into, right into, into the Microsoft, the Microsoft uh, ecosystem, you can be you signing in with your Microsoft account to the computer, all your settings are supposed to be coming back to it, your apps should reinstall themselves, you may have to you may have to, may have to authorize it, but your list of apps is right there in the in the, in the store. And if you're, and if in, you're the cloud, in the cloud, then your data, then your data is there, there as well. But yeah, but yeah, you're right about, you're right the, about refreshing. the refreshing. The, what's, the, frustrating what's frustrating about, about that, depending on how they were how added to my uh, my network my network adapter, adapter uh, I, suspect uh, I suspect that that would have, that would have been across any, any other username usernames or a, or a new username would have adopted, would have adopted those, settings. those settings. So even so, even even deleting deleting my, my creating, a, creating a new user profile, profile on the Windows 10 computer, computer I, don't I don't believe would have resolved that problem. Look at that. I just realized I had two microphones on. No effect on you guys, just the recording on me. Jim, how's your internet connection? I'm sorry, Jim or Jim Cunningham. Are you you were telling us about issues with your Wi Fi two weeks ago. The next light Wi Fi in your your internet provider. Did you ever get all that resolved? Yeah, I finally did. Um it turned out it was a problem with the uh, provider. Got on uh, the phone with them, and they helped me walk through it. Uh, and it was a fairly easy fix. Um, but it did require ultimately rebooting the whole system again. Okay. But you look great now, and you sound good, so it looks like your Internet's flying. I think it's fine now, yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, that was just something I wanted to check on. Well, thank you. And I keep waiting. I keep waiting for Judy to come back because she was the one with the uh, calendar issues. So if anybody talks to Judy, I got her solution with the calendar. <laughs> what were you going to say, Dave? Um, I've been having trouble with my fiber optic connection starting maybe two or three days ago. We've only been in town a week. Do you have the correct phone number for Telmex these days? That's well, English. no, uh, but I do have a phone number that's associated with fiber optic, but it didn't seem to make any difference. I felt like I called Telmex on I, just their regular 800 number, but they do have a number that they they say is direct to their fiber people. We, I can give you that. Okay. It's 1-800-123-5454. Note the, the difference. The, the standard internet number is 2222, and the number for fiber is 5454, or so they say. 
I've been getting text messages about fiber, and this is the 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 eight hundred number that they associate with it. And I talked to people about fiber on the phone last week, and this is the number they gave me. Thanks. I just need to check because my fiber connection has really been pretty bad. Okay. Speaking of of um, uh, fiber optics in um, in San Carlos, there's uh, some talk about it at uh, Tecoli too. There, there's, they're doing something around there. There's been some uh, engineers around looking at the place. Well, that would be awesome. I talked to two guys just last week. They came and looked at my block. I have there's fiber optics three streets away from me, and they made it very clear to me there's no plans of installing any new fiber. There are, there are, there are plans, but there's no. No one's setting up to install fiber. They like they've got blueprints, but there's there's nobody that's working on any active projects to install new fiber. Oh yeah. So I hope I hope that like like specific locations like that they're pushing forward on some of these projects. <laughs> but he couldn't tell me of any place that they were installing new fiber. It's go, the, chances are it just goes right by on the road in front of us, you know. If that's the case, then that's the kind of project that they would push forward with. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. If it's right, if it's already there, like there is no chance they're going to bring fiber down my street. In no. fact, we're talking about dragging it from three, three streets away. No, it's, a, it's right on the highway. So that's the advantage there. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Gotta hope. I, yeah, I hope we hear more about that. Yeah. Because Loma del Mar and yeah, Loma del Mar could really use that. They, their internet infrastructure is frustrating. But again, then you're, you're a mile or more off the highway. So. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, uh, what else do we got for topics? I got a question for you. Sure, go ahead. Um, I'm having problems with uh, uh, LastPass. I want to. Okay. I want to reload it, but I don't want to lose all of my information. You want to reload it, but you don't want to lose all your information. Well, I, they do have an export feature. Okay. I, I, I have not done it myself, but I always assumed I could just export it into a, into a CSV file and then import it again. Okay. While we're talking. I'm sure I export. I didn't even do an export it and just reloaded it and everything was still there. Fine. We, well, are you talking about setting up a new account or just installing the app again? I just reinstalled the app in my case. Yeah. It, Fred, what was your, what was it you were trying to do? I'm sorry. I assumed you were trying to load a new account. No, I'm trying to right now. My uh, last pass doesn't pick up passwords. So there's a problem someplace. Ah, okay. Well, you yeah, no, like like Dave said, if you, if you just uninstall the app and reinstall and log into it, that that sounds like a sounds like a broken broken app. No, you know they got hacked. What recently? Yes, I took it. Like what? How how recent have they been hacked? Uh, I haven't heard anything. I'd say within two months. Ah, I'm not familiar with that. We would have talked about that. I wonder why we didn't talk about that. Well, yeah, because it's a cloud service, Fred, you should be able to uninstall the app and just sign back into it when you install it again. Okay. Yeah, there shouldn't be any concern for losing it. I'll give it a shot. I've lost my list. There's my What else do we have here? Did you guys see that Amazon's trying to buy MGM? I heard that. Yep. What do you think of it, Scott? Oh, I just, it's Amazon's such a bizarre company. What, what do they, they own the Wall Street, is it the Wall Street Journal they own? They, 
Washington Post. They oh, the Washington it. Post. That's it. They own the Washington Post. Right. Yeah. And, and so I like, I think Jeff Bezos has a thing for like golden era products. <laughs> <laughs> MGM. I mean, what a, what a, uh, an amazing collection of, of content to add to your streaming service. If you own MGM, I, I, I would assume that is, that includes United Artists because they've been talking about the James Bond dynasty is really the ones that have been dragging their heels on the deal. But they are, it would also include Rocky, too. Yeah. Wow. But something MGM, about the... Doesn't MGM Sagan, own HBO? No, AT&T owns HBO. Ah, right, I'm sorry. And actually, that's the other bit of news recently in streaming news is that AT&T is going forward with combining Warner Media with this, this discovery uh, assets and they've got something like a hundred franchised properties that are joining them so it's just going to be this behemoth whoever thought AT&T would be this behemoth in the streaming world <laughs> it's going to be AT&T Amazon and Disney oh and Netflix of course and I guess at some point Apple will have some say, but they definitely don't have they don't have the kind of assets to compete in that space. They could buy them, but they haven't built assets that could compete with that kind of. I I often wonder why why companies like like Apple could just dominate. They could have they could have bought all those things, and then they would be this behemoth in the streaming world. Doesn't it just come down to they're just uh, ends up with two and they're both uh, fighting each other? Isn't that how it goes with species, you know, <laughs> battle of the species? <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. I think that's what we always watch. We watch Coke battling Pepsi. Red against blue, the ultimate for dominance. In the end, there I, can only be one. Yeah. Oh, Sci fellow sci-fi fan, did you hear that they're going to reboot Highlander? No, I did not. And make more, you mean? Well, apparently oh, the way it's great. written is is they're talking about rebooting the the um the story. Like 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 redoing the original Highlander movie with uh Henry Cavell, the the guy who played the most recent Superman. Hmm. He was also in one of the Mission Impossible movies. He's been in a bunch of stuff. He's been well regarded as a great actor, but they're gonna gonna put him in the role, I guess. Or actually, no, they didn't say. It's it's a rumor which role he would be. I actually think he'd be better as the villain in the original story than he would be. <laughs> oh yeah, the Highlander. Who would play Sean Connery? That's a that's another one. An Egyptian with a Scottish accent. <laughs> that was one of my favorite. It's still one of my favorite movies. It, it's amazing to think of how many properties came out of that. You know, they made three horrible movies afterwards, and then they had a great TV series that went on for years. I want to say by five to seven years. I thought the TV series was really quite fun. It was good, and I think that some of the actors in that TV series was by far better actors than was in the original movie. Yeah. <laughs> what else do we have for today? I stuck some links into those articles in the chat if you guys are interested. They're, from, uh, they're articles from Business Insider about AT&T owning everything and the merger that they're doing between Warner Media and Discovery. I do think it's going to be interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll end up with on a, a, an Amazon Fire TV as well. We'll end up with a box for AT and T, a box for Disney, a box, a box for what else is there? The yeah. Netflix.
I've got an article here on making Alexa your security camera, and I was thinking of Bill when I read it. It's not a great security camera. Uh, it has some real disadvantages using an Alexa. You know, they have these new Alexa shows. I wonder if I can get one on the screen while we're talking. They, uh, Bill has an Alexa an Alexa show. or an, Well, I'm just setting off these devices right now, aren't I? An Echo show is what I meant to say. Here, I got one on screen. This is... The most recent generations look like a smart speaker that's holding a screen. These actually rotate. They have something like, I don't know, 180 degrees of mobility, move back and forth. The idea is they actually that. Am I, am I remembering this right from the last was that they've got the is this the one that they can follow you as you're in a conversation? One of these can. I think it's this one. Maybe it's the Facebook one doesn't matter doesn't matter what matters though is that you can't use bill was telling us about how he was using drop-in to kind of check out the house uh, it, look at a webcam inside the house the these screen devices have a webcam they're a smart speaker and they have a feature called drop-in where registered devices you can just pop in your face appears like that guy from Red Dwarf, he just you just show up on the screen, and you're talking to whoever's in the room and listening to them. Well, there's this this new thing called uh, monitor, home monitoring, that you can set on the device itself, and you can it, home monitoring before you disregard it because you have too old of a device has actually been adopted to all the devices back to the Echo Show 5 and the Echo Show 8, the first editions of those. So so the small one and the big one, all the way back to the first edition, can use home monitoring. And this is like a basic webcam in your room uh, for security. Uh, this is an article that I'm flipping through right here. It talks about how to turn it on. It has to be turned on on the device. Uh, you can't do it from the Alexa app. Oh, I said it again. Uh, you can't do it from the app on your phone. You actually have to go to the device itself to turn this home monitoring on. But when you turn it on, then you're able to drop in without projecting an image of yourself. So it's, it's just whatever the screen is, the camera's on, but whatever the screen is, the screen is. You do have some other features like you can offer a to blur the image and give an audio indicator. I think drop in allows you to do that as well. So like the first few seconds of video are blurred for the discrepancy and uh, to be discreet with whoever's in the room. So they got time to run and put a pair of pants on. Uh, so it, it, it has that it's called video delay and audio alert. So that exists in it. But the two big differences between this and drop in is that you're able to do one way only and you're able to pan the room if you have one of these newer devices. So you can, what you can't do with drop in, if you have one of these newer devices, if you drop in, it's just sitting where it's sitting. But if you use room monitoring to look at what's happening in the room with a new device, then you can rotate the neck and you can look around the room. It still doesn't have up and down. It, I'm doing all these hand gestures can't see it still doesn't have up and down it's only got left and right but and it's kind of a crummy security camera right now because it doesn't support recording so it's much more like drop in you can see what's happening in that room but unless you've got an app on your device you're using that can screen record what's being broadcasted to you there's no way of Motion sensing doesn't exist either. So you can't record the video in the room. And you cannot tell it to trigger when there's movement in the room. So it's, it's lacking some real fundamental security. But if you had the need pop into a room and you didn't want to announce yourself, uh, this looks like the way to do it. 
I could not find anything that says this, but this is my assumption, is the third feature of home monitoring is that you don't have to enable drop-in. And, and I think that is, I mean, I haven't been able to find that anywhere, but that's the assumption that I can make because you have to enable drop-in on, on Echo devices using Amazon service because you have to enable them then with this, you would have the power of being able to check on that room without making it a drop-in spot, if, if that makes sense. I'm, I'm interested in hearing Bill and Cheryl's opinion on this, because I know Bill's been using drop-in. Well, um, we don't use drop-in that much. I've played with it a bit on my, I have an Echo View, I guess it is, 5. Does that sound right? Uh, oh, it's a view or is it a show? I was Shows. thinking it was a I show. It's a small one, five inch. A uh, five inch, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it it works. I mean, uh, you can check out what's going on in the room, uh, and it does announce itself. It, it's it's a drop-in, but we, I haven't – I'm planning on leaving it on somewhere in the, you know, in the kitchen, living room when, when we're away, so I can just check on the house. I have, I'm of the opinion that, that security isn't going to be worth much. Uh, you know, if somebody kicks my door in and, and ravages the house, it's going to take them a half hour to do. What's the point of having a big security system? The alarms go off, sure. But what am I going to do? Right. But if I, if I know there's a problem in the house... I, you know, whoever is kind of looking after my house, I can inform them and they can come and look. That, that's about it. You know, that, I, 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 I think what we're looking at with, with this kind of add-on is that you already have this device. I, if you guys haven't been familiar with the Echo Show, the idea is that you've got this smart screen attached to a smart speaker. So you can ask for things like the weather and it'll pop up the weather report and tell you about it. Yes. That screen is also used for communication with other people that have similar devices. And so it's got a webcam built into it so you can make video calls through it. The, the, and, other, and, the other thing that oh, happens on ours is uh, if we tell it to play uh, my playlist or something most of the songs have the lyrics so that you can see where you've been singing the song the lyrics wrong all your life <laughs> i like that uh, <laughs> well you can you can tell i'm going to put this back up on my screen you can tell the the variety of of uh, systems here I and mean, this is like one of my favorite is that five inch could easily be right next to your bed it could be your um alarm clock and I think the idea is that you have bought these devices very inexpensively and you've scattered them around your house and this repurposing just adds just a little bit more spice to what you're doing. Maybe you have a home security system, but you don't have a, you don't have a um, camera in the bedroom and you just, your mm -hmm. home security system just got triggered. And you're like, something's going on in my house. You can go check on the bedroom as well because they have this extra feature. I've never wanted to turn drop-in on on my system. The way I understand drop-in to work is that you enable it on your device and then you give a list of contacts that are, are able to drop in. And I've never, there, there hasn't been anybody on my list of contacts that I would want to just to automatically be able to hear what we're saying in the living room. So I've never wanted to turn it on, but I have been very interested in monitoring the living room at times. And with a feature like this, I wouldn't have to open it up to a system like drop-in that's really intended more for video calls, but I'd still have the ability to listen to what's going on in the living room, kind of like a child monitor. I suspect that we're going to see more features added to this. I, unlike Apple, Amazon is a real history of putting unrefined features out. And I think what we're seeing is the stepping stones into a more robust security platform. They've already got it with Ring. Yeah, a lot of their acquisitions already include a security platform. And I think that very shortly we're going to have the Amazon Prime security 
platform, either part of being a Prime member or an additional $30 a year, you can use Prime Security. And it's going to turn all your devices into your home security. Hmm. Did you guys catch the, I mean, on this note of how available the, these, these products are becoming, did you catch that last week, if you signed up for Amazon Music, you could buy an Amazon Dot, one of, one of those Echo Dots, a smart speaker, for 99 cents. Hmm. So you subscribe to the music service and you buy the equipment for a dollar. The, the equipment was $49. But they make the equipment and the service, so they could just give it to you like Polaroid cameras back in the day. So what happens if you're already a subscriber? Can you still get it for a dollar? Can you resubscribe? No, I don't think you can. I think I read that specifically, that that deal was not available to current subscribers. They're yeah. punishing you for having faith in them early. Yeah, but only Congress has it as an account. <laughs> so the other, you know, um, right? And we, and we have the, uh, the we have the limited one. Like you, we have it on one device only. The 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 music account. Yeah. And this about? is the Amazon Unlimited Music subscription that they were selling. I think it was like three ninety nine or five ninety nine a month. I you know I actually did I, I had it as a where did I put it? I actually had it set aside. And this morning I went to see if the deal was still available and it's gone. Yeah, I think I just deleted the topic. I'm sorry I bring it up now. I had it on my list <laughs> and I deleted it. <laughs> but it fits so perfectly with Amazon devices and 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 how they're all over your house. How easy for them to get all over your house. Well, what else do we got going on? You guys want to do some recommendations? Anybody watching, listening, reading, using anything they would like to share with the group? Again, I uh, I set up that track page I was mentioning this morning. Did I ever get that link into our chat? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Okay, good. Good. So that so that's where I've been keeping track of and we'll be keeping track of the movies and TV shows we talk about in club. But I am actually still looking for something to keep track of applications or yeah, podcasts or books or audio books. And so if any of you find yourself using something to keep track of that kind of stuff, please suggest it because I'm not sure I'm I'm tempted to um, put together a list in the Google Podcast app, but I don't think I can make it public, and that's the goal. The goal is to have a list of things that we're recommending that we can um, just list out in public without having to have a special account. Well, when it comes to books, uh, we have a group of us that belong to that Goodreads, and, mm -hmm. and you can see your friends and you can see what your friends are reading. And if, if your friend posts, say, uh, you know, it's, they can import your friends list off of um, Facebook. Uh -huh. So uh, that's the one that, that we've kind of been using for. And it, it's um, fiction, nonfiction. It, it's anything uh, printed. You can do, you ha do, you, do you have to have an account to look at a reading list on Goodreads? Um, I believe you do. Um, well, no, I can look at, at some other people's things without my own account, but in order for them to see mine and me to see them, we, we all created them. Sure, it, sure, it's a, sure. It's a free service, but anyways, Goodreads is where we do that. And I've been meaning to ask, and I keep forgetting, but now it's here, and I'm going to do it now. Um, I believe that there's an app or there's something out there that you can scan business cards into and then it creates like a contact list or something other than your your telephone's contact but uh, a specifically business card reader like a rolodex yeah and i yeah. thought that like i think jim's still on but i think jim you used to have one or something is he there not this jim oh he's muted Oh, he's gone. 
No, he's there. She... Well, Cheryl, in general, I can say I definitely know those kinds of apps uh, have existed in the past, and I've helped people with them in the past, but I haven't used one in a long time. I don't know. I don't know what. But I did do business card scanners. There's still business. There's still devices out there to put a physical business card through to scan. And so it would. Uh, but you'd think you'd be able to do that with your phone now. You just, I would look for a phone app in like Google Play or in the Apple App Store. I bet there's an app Scott, that is specifically. Oh. Can I interrupt a second? I had to step away for a minute. What's this about uh, scan biz card and so forth? Well, Cheryl was saying she thought you used an app to keep track of business cards. Yeah, it's called, I think it's BizScan, and uh, I've got hundreds of business cards on there. And is it an app on your phone? Yeah. I'm That's looking cool. for it right now to tell you. Yeah, it's called Span Scan Biz Cards. One word. S C A N Capital B I Z Capital C A R D S. Scan Biz Cards. B I Z is the important thing in there, right? Here it is. Scan. Go ahead, Jim. And I use uh, something called Turbo Scan for documents, and I bet I've got three or four thousand documents on my phone. So, fourteen day tr free trial. Yeah, I would suspect there is a lot of competition for this out there because oh, just yeah, because of the nature. There does What's that? Absolutely the same thing. Yeah, I think it's good to have a recommendation, and you're happy with it. Right? You've been using yeah. it for years. You said. Yeah. Do you pay for it, or is it a f the free portion? Um, I'm sure. There's a is free there a free portion? It has a few cards, and uh, the a free version of TurboScan allow you to view documents, and then I probably paid three ninety nine for unlimited uh, space or something like that. I know it was so nominal that it didn't even register. Okay, the one I'm looking at, ScanBiz Cards says $1.39, and the other one is ScanBiz Cards Lite, and it just says Get. Oh, am yeah. I looking at the right thing? This Scan is Biz this Card. is what I found. ScanBizCards dot com with well, a 14 day store. free trial and Cheryl I started with light and then went to the uh, the uh, the bigger one Cheryl and you're in the Apple store yes sorry Jim I didn't mean to cut you off there not, not a problem it says that it's four years okay. old and it gets really good reviews um, I think I've got it on my screen now. Scan Biz Light. Scan Biz Cards Light. So this is a free one? Yeah, that's the uh, trial version. Try it and see what it is. Oh, okay. And then they've got another one, Scan Biz Cards. Right. Which is obviously the one you would pay for. And it's 99 cents. Yeah, $1.39. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's Canadian dollars, that though, right? That would be the difference. <laughs> hey, there's another one called Business Card Scanner and Reader Scan and Organize, and it doesn't look like it costs anything. But again, I bet there's lots, lots. And I bet with our phones now, you don't even need special hardware. You don't have to scan business cards. You can just take a photo of it. I bet it can... Yeah, OCR all the information off of a card now. We've got these high quality lenses. How many megapixels do you need to read Sam Smith on a card? Well, that's probably true. The thing I like about it is the organization. I can find it instantaneously and I don't have to search through. I also I like the cards. idea of having a separate app on the phone specifically for business card content uh, contacts. Like, oh, that guy, he gave me his card. I know exactly where to find that info. Right. Well, 
And why I'm using it is like I have uh, 64 years worth of acquired, you know, business cards, and I'm trying to declutter and throw out. And so, yeah, I'm looking for a card reader. Yeah, that actually, I'm glad we're on this topic because I do that constantly. I'm cleaning up my office and I find piles of business cards and I'm constantly on this game of, do I chuck it? Do I, I mean, I haven't, I haven't called this person in years, but maybe I don't want to lose this information. Do I take the time to put it in my contact list? I've already got thousands of contacts. That's what maybe I, it's, yeah. I want, yeah. It, I want it separated. Like I have people that I met on a trip in 1984 when I was in the South Pacific. And I found all these things when I'm cleaning up all my memorabilia. So it would be nice to have them not in my contact list because I probably will never phone them or whatever. But it's kind of nice to have from, you know, I kept the business card uh, because I met them. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say there is uh, there is some kind of meta information in knowing this is a business card contact. I, I, I don't know why, but it just it, it feels that way. It feels like this is the list of people that hand out cards of presentation. I, I I don't know why, but that 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 data point see, makes a difference in my head than somebody I'm keeping track of in my phone is just one of my contacts. This is somebody that handed me. I, I don't know why, but it just makes a difference in my brain for some reason. Yeah, How can you get back to them by the, we, by the we, business or by the name? Well, uh, the idea is that these applications would. Look at Paul's trying to show us his card, but something about his background is bleeding through on his camera. You're sort of there, Paul. Yeah, I was going to say, You're... as soon as we retired, we found out that people that travel, like snowbirds, carry personal business cards. Like Jim and Linda, the oh. first time I met them, they gave yep. me their business card. So when I say business card, Snowbird I don't... Snowbird card. <laughs> but yeah, 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 no, absolutely. Yeah. And knowing... Knowing that, that this is the way you've made this contact, for, for me at least, has some significant significant data point. And, and uh, Jim, to answer your question, what, what these apps would do is they would identify the data on the card. It would look at the card and use OCR, optical character recognition. Mm -hmm. And then it would use uh, AI to determine that's a name, that's a phone number. That's an address. And so that information would be stored right alongside it. So you could literally click on the card and make the phone call. Well, that's okay, exactly let's, right. Let's everybody put your business card up in the frame. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> let's see it. I'll find Jim and Linda's. <laughs> I'd be happy so, to do it. I don't have to. I can. The best I could do is this right now. I can I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we need one for the computer club. You know, we all need a business card. You know, so. <laughs> Anyways, I, I need to organize it. But Jim, can you, instead of just having it sort by the business names or the types, could you put it like personal or the trip you, you met them on? Can you put information onto it? Yeah. In other words, you can store it in different categories. I have uh, a category of credit cards, all of our credit cards, Linda's, mine, Jason's, Janet's, everybody's. So that if something happens and I need that information and the other person's not around, I have it. And all of that information is uh, imported in the field so that if I'm, uh, so that it's, it's a large database. If I'm looking up by, uh, um, uh, one uh, uh, TV service. You know, I can find one's uh, business card. I can't even remember his last name, but it'll instantly come up um, so that you can uh, sort by uh, sort and search by any keyword that uh, that's on the card. The uh, the credit card thing makes me a little nervous. Are you do you feel comfortable with the security of the app that you're using? Yeah, I mean, you're okay. But you know what, Scott, the fact, the fact that I feel comfortable with it <laughs> is probably not a real strong recommendation. <laughs> I'd feel a lot better if you felt comfortable with it. <laughs> Jim's well, and together too comfortable in a general sense. 
Yeah. 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 Well, well, and like last pass, aside from Linda saying they were hacked recently, would have given me the comfort to put credit cards in it because they have good encryption that's been vetted. And most the the times that they've had, they're a large target. Last pass is very well known. And so they they get targeted all the time. I haven't seen a compromise yet with them that wasn't an implementation problem. And, and as far as their encryption goes, the way they've implemented the encryption is sound. And so I would feel comfortable putting copies of credit cards in it. But I don't know about BizCard scanner for 99 cents in the app store if I felt comfortable putting my credit card into that. But that's I lack I lack any knowledge other than what we've gleaned from you today here. So I have no idea. It might be really well vetted. Well, why don't you take a good hard look at it and get back to us? Yeah. I would like to know. <laughs> you know, another one I would trust uh, tr trust is the Apple Wallet. I mean, if you really wanted to carry around your credit cards in a digital form, the Apple Wallet should be very secure if you're using Apple devices. <clears throat> Have good encryption. I mean, that's what it's all about is keeping all your credit cards right there. I just make photocopies of all my credit cards, driver's license, kept a couple photocopies so that we could, in case we were to lose them or we went on a trip and something happened to our credit cards, at least I had them. Yep. Good idea. I feel safer for doing that than putting them on a, uh, you know, putting them on my phone or something. I photographed the back of my credit card so that I could call them if I lose the card. Yeah, front and yeah, back. Yeah, that's good. The yeah. the, uh... Well, the front has the number. I, I, I just didn't want to have that floating around in my phone. Well, actually, the uh, Capital One card, the number's on the back. On the venture well, card, the number's on the back. Oh, he meant the card number, not the telephone number. <laughs> No, no, the, the, the C. The I think Linda card. means the card numbers on the back, too. Is the that what you're number. saying, Linda? Is on both the front and the back? No. The front oh. of the venture card only has your name. Oh, that's interesting. Hello? And the back has the card number, the signature thing, which nobody uses. Yep. The valid, the date, and your security code, and the phone numbers. That's interesting. So, you know, if you've got your card out in front of somebody at a cash register, nobody can see the number. I, you know, I wonder how much concern we really have. Like credit card numbers are stolen all the time. We're not aware of it. Credit card companies have insurance to cover their losses. They're so good about holding you you're never responsible for thefts of your credit card and they try and make it as painless as possible for you to continue to use credit afterwards i mean i i just taking pictures of your credit cards is that really a security risk in this day and age i we used to argue about whether whether we should have to have to give out our social security numbers and now they're all over the place i just i don't know how much the credit card companies have worked really hard in their field to make you feel comfortable using credit. It's hard. I, I don't know anybody that's gotten burned by a credit card. Do, do you guys know anybody that's gotten hurt because their credit card got stolen? Other than the inconvenience of having to get another card. No. Credit ratings never been thrashed. People haven't been held accountable for un, unauthorized purchases. Most credit card companies will send you out a credit card very quickly so you don't don't have to go without credit very long, like oxygen. Or at least that's how it is in the United States. I assume it's that way everywhere. Yeah, Because that's the way it is in the United States. Like oxygen. How could you live without credit? Well, I had my, my uh, credit card from my bank um, compromised. I still had the card in my hand. But, mm -hmm. there was, you know, there were things going on at 
And um, yeah, I just phoned them and I told them that it was denied in the restaurant and I wanted to know what was going on. And when I looked online, there were these charges, places where I'd never been. Yeah, they just had me fill in all the information and they reported it and they took all of the charges. They denied all of the charges and I, I financially was never affected. I did have to get a, a whole new bank login and I had to change all of my, because it was linked to my credit, my credit card that was on my bank account. So they had to send me new credit card, but I also had to get a new um, ID card. So it would have been a problem if we were away because yeah, that yeah, was absolutely. a real pain. We were traveling, but we were still in the same country and we were home the next week. So I was able to go into you know, a bank and, and get it all done. But uh, it would have been a huge hassle if we'd been in Mexico. Good good reason to have two banks. Yeah. Well, it's a, good, have, reason. It's a have, good reason to have a credit card that's not joined together. That one was. And so my credit card got it, is compromised at the same time. Uh, yeah. We now have at least... Yeah. one credit card each that is separate from each other so if one gets dinged then the other one still works mm, good thinking bill that's a good yeah. idea but yeah well, it went along with with a lot of swearing about my credit card not working anymore <laughs> well well I, again when we're talking about these things i think that's really the security we're talking about is is what the, the threat is the inconvenience of yes. not having credit at that moment. It's nothing else. That's the, everything else is security that you're performing so that the credit card companies lose less money when they're stolen from. Right. I, you know, you hear stories about people that had the, their bank accounts, whatever, and that they lost money and they, they lost, um, you know, personal ID kind of, fraud but not usually from a credit card it's usually from other information that you've put out there i i'm not a big fan of using a debit card for anything yeah. because i figure a bad person an individual or a program could wipe my bank account out faster than i could justify what was happening well, we used to have bank cards that were just mm -hmm. basically for us to use in ATMs, and they changed them into debit slash credit cards. And I said, but I did not ask for that, and I do not want that. Tough. That's the yeah. way it is. You know, so that that's unfortunate. But we never use those cards in that way. But that's right. I, and I don't recommend it. I, 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 don't, I don't know if they get the same security practices as the credit cards do when you've used a bank card that is a visa debit card i'm assuming they get the same kind of insurance and mm -hmm. the same same kind of security but at the same time until then what they've done is taken all the cash out of my bank yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, like all of a sudden balance is at zero and i'm trying to solve this problem <laughs> well i don't do automatic monthly payments i don't allow somebody else another company, whatever, to just automatically take. Because we've right. seen problems with like utility bills, uh, errors being made and people, you know, ending up paying $1,200 on when they expected to. Oops, oh, she froze. She froze. Oh, Bill, are you still with us? Oh, Bill's with us. Okay, there I, she is. I'm fine. You're back, Cheryl. Oh. I didn't know that I left. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. Well, when you're talking about about utility bills being paid uh, with mistakes, uh, you got to feel sorry for the people in Texas after that ice storm uh, with the utility bills they wound up with. Oh yeah, right, right. No, that was crazy. Thousands and thousands of dollars. Did they ever sort that out, or are they actually liable for that amount of money? I haven't heard any recent news on it. Uh, you, we, you know, we do meme news now. Like things like that generate viral interest, and then nobody cares afterwards. Yeah. So they're exactly they're right. probably living in a barrel without any clothes. Nobody cares anymore. It's not on the internet. That's right. <laughs> they just moved into a box down the road. It's yeah, yeah. It's gone off Twitter. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? They're gone. Next, next interesting thing, please. <laughs> Yeah. Well, there we go. Anybody bring any other? Well, you know, we never did 
did recommendations that we, 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 we digressed all the way over to credit cards from Cheryl, recommendations. Cheryl's she started. Does it, Sorry. Does that, yeah. Yeah. We started talking about books and collections and then ended up on business cards and then made our way to credit cards. <laughs> if yeah. any, anybody's looking for a logical map, this is the reason robots will not replace the human. Well, the track, you know, you asked for uh, data somehow to keep track. And that's yes, what we absolutely. Had. Anyways, we watched Ford and for Ford versus Ferrari. Actually oh, yes. watched it together uh, this week. And, um, well, Bill, you wondered, what was that really what happened? <laughs> Does anybody know? Like, with, well, yeah. Uh, well, well, my question was, did they finish three across the line at the end? Is that a true uh, anecdote? You know, I didn't Google it. I just made the assumption it has to be because who wouldn't Google that? Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, like you're making this. Googling. You're you're making this movie and you're gonna have a have a big ending like that and and it's gonna be bullshit. I don't yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> well, uh, every you'd have every Chevy owner out there going, no, nah, that's not how that happened. <laughs> and I guess my question is: Is this a genre? Is it is it uh, docu drama? What is this genre that? Uh, you know, the Ford versus Ferrari, the, the different ones that we watch that are stories about people that were involved in Black Lives Matter. Is, is this a, a new, it's not a documentary because they're actually acting like the people that one night in Miami, you know. So right, they've I, taken I, liberties. They, yeah, it's it's really odd, isn't it? I like docudrama, but I don't think that encompasses it in its yeah. entirety. Because <laughs> this could have been everything that happened outside of the races could be completely fictional. It's just some interpretation of what their history was. But the races have to be true because people are going to look that stuff up. They're going to see who won that race and, and what car blew up and which and what happened with the brakes being too hot and all that stuff. Yeah. So well, in, in novels, we call it historical fiction. But, uh, you know, it, it is something that I'm... I'm finding out during our COVID watching that I'm, I'm really quite intrigued by them. So the other one that I watched was the one about um, RBG uh, in her early days. And it was the documentary. A matter. No, um, no. This oh, go ahead. Anna, a matter of sex, a matter of sex. It's a movie. And uh, I think I watched it on Netflix. Maybe. I think, it's there on Netflix. Yeah. I think it, yeah. That was a really interesting, interesting one for me. Oh, and there was one more that we watched this week. That was a good movie. I found it interesting just because she's such a public figure, and and her. I found her history uh, interesting to learn her history. It seems it, I, she's such a um, um, uh, controversial figure in her positions, and then you find out well. Not really. She's kind of a conservative lady all the way from the beginning. She just got herself into a position where she's in, she's fighting this conservative or this um, controversial uh, issue. I found it very That's interesting. Right. Though. Well, it, it, it's, it's a term that we're also talking about with our book club, but it's modern feminism. And um, RBG, you know, she was trying to make it in law, but because she was female, she had problems at Harvard. You know, there were, were just different different things about that. But that story made it seem like even the fact the female thing was kind of secondary to her goal, right? Like that, it just just worked out that way. I mean, she's definitely a feminist in 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 that respect, but but her the the um, her. Her concern was more for the freedoms of the law, and and this woman issue fits right in with that. Accidental feminism, yes. That's what it felt like, yeah. Yeah, but then that's a was, good way to say it. Accidental yeah. feminism. And it was also the the younger generation. It was in her daughter's eyes. It was important to her to be be seen in a certain way, and I think that women have that all the time, you know, in your mother's eyes, in your daughter's eyes. What are we? What are we doing? Right, 
right? Is this what you want to teach your next generation that this is okay? Or is this the time to change it? Well, even our, our, our stepson, you know, he looks at his daughter and he, he wants to know how to teach her, um, you know, self-protection, but also to be as strong and stand up for yourself, you know, like, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a whole issue for parents, for you about your own self. Yeah. 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 But that was an interesting one. And the Ford versus Ferrari was interesting for both of us. Like I say, there was another series that I watched, but I can't remember what it was. Well, I'm into, <laughs> I'm into some TV shows that have been on, and Equalizer is one that was on. And I like the premise that there's going to be a vigilante out there standing up for the people that the crooked cops are, you know. Only the person they cast in it is Queen Letitia. And I'm afraid that when Queen Letitia, you know, looks at you seriously and says... It's all about my family. And she's trying to be tough. All I hear is the comedy kind of coming out. Of it. it's, <laughs> it's just not working for me. And finally, the series ended the other night. And I thought, thank God, I don't have to be committed to doing this. But anyways, the equalizer is out there. And I do not recommend. <laughs> no, I'll put a, that on the not recommended list. <laughs> this is a sign of, of uh, things that happen in this house. You know, Cheryl is watching a series that she absolutely hates, but she's not going to stop watching it for some right. reason. I'm not sure why, but you know, <laughs> it comes to bed at two o'clock in the morning, muttering about the stupid show. A quick note. I looked up Ford versus Ferrari on Wikipedia and it turns out it was somewhat similar to the movie is not quite accurate, but it's very, I, I think two of the cars, past the, the finish line the other one the other ford was further back but it did finish third well, way, I, a quick read on the information so well bill that's and, what the story said too in the movie you remember that that they didn't count him as coming in first because he started from behind or he started well, yeah, from a different other, position the other, the other ford was 20 meters down the start line so yeah they the uh hume or whatever it was bulldog is the guy that uh, he got cheated out of the the win because he he played by you know did what they wanted played, it right was to wait for him and to come across and when he, when he did that yeah and I'm sorry we're straight. totally spoiling this mo movie if you're hoping for a <laughs> surprise ending you all know what it is now <laughs> but did the, did the guy that that screwed him over did the Ford um, guy that hated him. I think because the kid touched his car. But anyways, but did did he actually know that that was going to happen and he really screwed him? Or was it, oops. Yes, it says the guy knew that that was going to happen. Oh, what a bugger. He was a scumbag. <laughs> he played a really good scumbag. Hey, that yeah, movie a, was full of actors, too. Yeah, there was, a, think, there was a lot of, I was surprised at how many actors I knew were in that movie because it sure wasn't, it wasn't uh, marketed that way. Yeah, the uh, they should have actually given uh, that bulldog his spanner wrench back at that moment. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's well, when he should have re reclaimed it. Yeah. I I've come with some. Re has anybody else come with some recommendations? I come with a couple. Anybody else want to add to our list? Oh, Linda, you got something? No. Jim. I'm gonna say goodbye. Oh, okay. Oh, bye. 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 Bye, Linda. See you next week, Linda. Okay. Um, a call to spy. It's a World War II. Netflix. Oh. A call to spy. I I talked about that one before, and okay. what did you guys think? Oh, we enjoyed it. And then uh, we did watch uh, the the spy the series six six um, uh, six episodes, and it was uh, with uh, Sasha Baron Cohen doing a very sort of a uh, he wasn't. Uh, the, his usual Borat self, you know. Wait, what are you talking about? It's a series called the Sp just Spy. 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 I S haven't heard of it. S P Y, and it's a six six piece series on Netflix. Um, uh, St Steal me a pencil. Anybody see that one? Steal, it's, uh, me, it's, steal me a pencil. I've never heard of that either. Holocaust. Is that a series? It's in the hol. It's about the Holocaust, and it's a movie. Steal me a pencil. It's about um, uh, life in in um, Nazi Germany, and uh, like there was 
there people are incarcerated and so stealing a pencil was like a big crime in those in that situation uh what's it the, the pianist world war ii movie oh yeah yeah okay croupier croupier <laughs> You're going to have to spell that, Jim. D R O U P I E R. Croupier. Oh, poopier, poopere. No, croup with a oh, C. C R U P E R. I I E R. I E R. Croupier en français. Croupier. And it's a British drama. Okay. And uh, then I also have a, have a, have a an Aussie drama, Ladies in Black. It's uh, anybody who watched Selfridge. Do you remember the the uh, the, the series about uh, people working in a store in New York? Anyway, okay. But this one is uh, uh, um, Australia. Ladies it's in, been black. in Australia, and uh, the ladies in black uh, they wear black because they work in a store. And so that's uh, it's not they're, they're not nuns or something like that. And, All right, Jim, uh, I just have to reconfirm with you. These are movies that you think we should watch, right? <laughs> well, these are all ones that, that uh, Carolyn and I have, have uh, you know, at least You've... given four stars, you know. Oh, excellent. Excellent. And, and I, I haven't heard of any of these. And Traitors. It's a British uh, uh, spy. Traitors. Traitors. Is that a series? Uh, I can't really remember whether it was a series or an one off, but I just I just went to our uh, our list of previously watched and Netflix and picked these up. Ah, off. okay. Right. We also love Love Song for uh, for Bobby Long, but of course everybody's seen that. Love Song for Bobby Long. I don't think I've seen it. No, I absolutely I remember it well. It was awesome. Yeah, it was a good movie. Yeah, that's why that's why when I saw it, even though I it's been around for a while i i put it in there anyway well there's that's a few that's still well, thank me a, you jim that's still great me a pencil was was, was I, great. and and i i see that at world war ii uh and holocaust is, seems to be a theme in my uh, my watching <laughs> in your watch history there <laughs> recommended devastation from the 1940s that's right, that's right. <laughs> i got i got one one comment that is not a recommendation but I ran across Cannonball Run the other day, and I started watching it. There are so many stars in that thing; you can't keep up with it. Yeah. I mean, if it, you was like, "Oh, who's that?" and you have to go, you know, go to uh, IMDb just to figure out who the hell it is. You know? Yeah. They 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 got they got stars falling out of cars in that place. Huh. It's a, that it's, that as a comedy, it reminds me of of the. Um, uh, oh, what's the action movie that has all the action stars in it? The, the Expendables. Or the, uh, is that the, is that the name of? But it's got Stallone. It's got Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's got, it's got J, right. uh, Jason Stack. It's just got everybody. It's got Bruce Willis in it. It's, it, it's like, let's make. And they made like three of these movies. The, the Expendables, I think, is the name of it. So, Bill, and, what's the name of that again? Cannonball. Cannonball Run. Classic movie from and my it, youth. Again, a <laughs> semi documentary because that is a real, it was a real race. The race basically was from a hotel or a restaurant in New York to a yeah, hotel right. in California. Yeah. Uh, you could, uh, they didn't care how you got there. You had to be driving, it had to have wheels. They didn't care how you got there. You just had to be the, the person getting the shortest time. Uh, and they didn't really care what you thought of the speed limit. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, I ran across one of these uh, memes the, the, the day after saying, uh, you are the main character of the last movie you watched. And I said, oh, yeah, Burt Reynolds with... with uh, <laughs> Oh, Del not Dom Welch DeLuise? That's my sight. <laughs> Dom, Dom, Dom Elise as the sidekick and the Raquel Welch as your love interest. My God, who can ask for anything more? You know, I just, I just Googled this and I forgot I Jackie think, Chan was in that movie. Jackie Chan as Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's he's in there as an Oriental Japanese. Right. I figured he, he really loved that one. Dean Martin, Sammy well, Davis Jr., Kind there you go. Fun. So, well, I'm so that is going. I'm that's going on the recommended list because I enjoy that film. <laughs> uh, and I, and you I, know I what? It, 
You, you know what? It, it, I, as a um, genre, it, it made me think of another movie I remember called The Gumball Rally. Gumball Rally is another yeah. one. Uh, <laughs> and it's it's very similar to, uh, what is it, Around the World in 80 Days. You know, and they have all these stars that do walkthroughs mm-hmm. in them. And you, can't, you can never figure out who the hell they all are. Bill, what was the name of the one that bought the squirrel? Squirrel. Oh, oh, you mean with Whoopi Goldberg and? Yeah. Um, that, is that Gumball Rally? No. That's... No, no. It's it's another one in in the Nevada. Uh, uh, John Cleese. Cleese. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. Well, I think I'm going to run off and go and watch some TV or or do chores like Carolyn sets for me. So uh, have a good day, guys. <laughs> Yeah. All right, Jim. We'll see you Bye-bye. next week, hopefully. Bye bye. Thanks for the recommendations. Go take care of your honeydew list. Okay. I got gonna, two recommendations. Too, because I'm going to go and meet uh, Jim's wife and the other Jim's wife and everybody in my book club in about five minutes. So I'm out of here. All right, Cheryl. She's have a good book club. Right now. I got. I got two recommendations, and then we can call it a meeting, unless you guys got more you want to talk about. I've got uh, one. Oh, Fred, you go ahead. Okay. What do you got? It's called World on Fire. Is it a show or a movie? Uh, it's a series. Okay. Mini series. PBS. It's on pub, uh, public broadcasting. PBS, okay. And the other one I had was The Tunnel. The Tunnel, the the TV show. No, it's a uh, series also. And it's on PBS. And it's uh, both in English and dubbed uh, French. Now, you're saying there's both a TV show and a movie of The Tunnel? Well, uh, there's a series called The Tunnel. And it's on public broadcasting. Okay. And it's... Uh, this is uh, between... What, why did... Channel? This is... Uh, uh, there's a murder on the channel on the uh, line between France and England. And That's half right. the body is on France and half the body is in England. <laughs> and... The, the French right. people are, are speaking French, and it has English uh, subtitles on that, and, and it, it's interesting. It's different. Let's put it that way. I'm trying to remember. I think this story, isn't this the inspiration for a series? I'm trying to remember the name of it. I, I, that was between Mexico and the United States. Is it the bridge? Is that right? Yeah, the I exact same. Bridge. Oh, hey, Pop. Hi. That yeah, was the bridge. It was the bridge? I'm trying to remember if that was inspired by this, the tunnel. No, it was inspired by the Scandinavian one. That was the Scandinavian bridge with inspired oh. Mexican. <laughs> Look at that. We got an English, French one, a Scandinavian one, and an American uh, Mexican one. <laughs> All whose jurisdiction should it be? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was about. So, Fred, we got them all? Are you still there? Yes. That's all. I'm going to put I'm going to put the bridge in there as well because we enjoyed that show i'll put that on today's meeting okay i brought two one is obviously a sci-fi because that's what i do the other is a documentary the sci-fi is a new series on netflix called jupiter's legacy now the the promotions for this make it really look like a superhero costume show but this is a really interesting show in that it's got Four subplots going on, and one of them is happening in the 1920s. The other three subplots are kind of dumb. 
they're all happening in present day and they are absolutely superheroes fighting supervillains. But the but the last subplot, the one that's happening in the past is the origin story. And the origin story, I found myself watching this show every episode aching for more origin story. I kept wanting to go back to the 1920s. It was like it, it was one of these treasure hunting kind of ex steamship expedition to secret island. And and one of the things that becomes very apparent while you're watching this is if we're having this story to introduce these characters, then the characters we're watching are easily 100 years old because they're in their 20s and 30s on this expedition. And they and they are the principal characters in the here and now. So I found as a sci fi a comic book heroes kind of guy, I found it a little dry. I didn't feel like the 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 superhero story had a lot to it, but I kept finding myself just intrigued with the backstory of these characters. And they wouldn't give you anything. I mean, you were aching to watch the next episode because you just needed some more of what was going on on this journey. How did these people get together? There's this whole uh, um, hearing hearing voices and vision quest that's going on That's they, that this one man has led this group of people on this adventure. And I really felt like that could have been a show all by itself. You could have cut out the other two thirds or three quarters of this, of, of these plots. And you would have had a great expedition to a secret Island that resulted in powers that would have been awesome to watch. I don't know if any of you watched it, but Jupiter's legacy, that's what it's called. And then the other is a documentary and it's called the crime of the century. It's on HBO now, right now. And this is a documentary that talks about the history of Purdue Pharma and their role in the opium crisis. And it's just amazingly in depth. It's lots of interviews with people that were pharmaceutical reps that were out there selling uh, Oxycontin and the way this family was involved in the organization and how they would promote the use of Oxycontin. It goes into the history of pain management and the, uh, the, way, the, the way that they uh, infiltrated the training doctrines of how to treat patients and how pain management became, how pain in the 70s got turned into one of those critical, um, what do they call it? Um, ah. Like when you're being taken care of, they check your vitals. It was considered one of your vitals is where's your pain management. I, I, I'm sure if you've ever been in an ER, they'll ask you a question. What's your pain at? 10 being the very worst you've ever felt. And you have, that, that came directly out of this time period where they had come up with opiates. They could use them for pain. And the idea was the cell pain management as a health, health aid. It's called The Crime of the Century. It's two parts, and it was really enlightening to, to the whole rise of the Purdue family. And that's all I got. Is anybody still with me? Did I bore everybody? <laughs> all still there? You are never boring, Scott. Oh, thank you, Bill. Sometimes you put us to sleep, but you're never boring. <laughs> Well, hey, we are vastly over whatever time we allow for these meetings. <laughs> Two hours. Two these hours seems all the time. It seems like that's what we're allowing for the meetings, I think, isn't it? I think what we're going to have to do is split it up and do like Tuesday, Thursday, or something. You know, so we have a shorter, shorter time. Period. That's gives right. Me, well, gives me something to look forward on to, uh, Thursdays. Besides Two one-hour meetings. Maybe we should have a meeting just dedicated to, to recommended movies. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I looked up the, the the movie that Cheryl was asking about. It had Whoopi Goldberg and all, a whole bunch of stars in it as well. It was uh, Rat Race. Rat Race. I remember yeah. seeing that. 
Aren't they looking for treasure or something? No, it, it's a group of very rich people in in uh, Las Vegas that are that stage a, a race for a million dollars in some other you know uh, some other town ta- city. And again, gotcha. you have you have to get there by any means possible. First one there, they got uh, Mr. Bean. Who's Mr. Bean? Oh yeah. Um... Black Adder. Um, uh, anyway, he's he's uh, got narcolepsy, so he falls asleep uh, occasionally. You know, it, it's it, the whole thing is 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 just one laugh after another, laugh, gag, laugh, laugh. Anyway, and uh, it, it's if you like that kind of movie with lots of stars in it, it's it's a good one. It's good light entertainment. You're not going to be depressed when you leave this movie. <laughs> Scott, you got a couple minutes after everybody signs off. Sure. Yeah. Why don't uh, why, why don't I get back to you after we've signed everybody off? Okay. Okay. I'm leaving. Check on. All right. Bye-bye. Everybody, have a great yeah. week. See you yeah. next Tuesday. Until next then, Tuesday, check Sean. on next Tuesday. Bring your right. recommendations, your topics. See you, Fred. See you, Jim. See you, Dave. Pop, why don't you just stay online and I'm going to shut this down real quick. Where am I? Here I am. Hello, this is Scott Stimson from International Computer Solutions and the San Carlos Computer Club here every Tuesday talking tech topics with people that matter. You can be one of those people. These meetings are open to anyone, so feel please feel free to join us at any time. If you're out there on the internet trying to solve computer problems, I can probably help you remotely. So send me an email, remote at internationalcs.net. Until next Tuesday, you guys have a great week and tech on. Let me turn this off. Dun, da, da, dun. Dun, da, da.